We have just seen inflation come in above expectations, but this could just be the start of a domino effect that takes the US economy into a severe recession. With a black swan event in the Middle East on the horizon, government debt surging at record-breaking pace and consumer spending power slipping to historic lows, there are now major red flags and warning signs of what is next to come. So September's inflation numbers have come in hot, with CPI hitting 3.7%, marking the third straight month of inflation increasing year over year, erasing recent progress in bringing inflation down. Now this was above the expected 3.6%, while core CPI came in at the estimated 4.1%, and means that inflation has reversed and is now getting worse rather than getting better. So not only are we now heading in the wrong direction, but we are also still a long way off the Fed's inflation target of 2%. With this alarming uptick in recent CPI and inflation data, the Fed is now likely to keep base interest rates at these elevated levels for even longer as a minimum. And the odds of further rate hikes in 2024 have just increased to 40% from just under 30% according to interest rate futures. And inflation could continue to climb in the coming months, with the main catalyst being rising oil prices due to the ongoing conflict in the Middle East that could drag in the major oil producing countries in that region. Now even before the conflict did break out, oil prices had been steadily rising since June 2023, but there are now new fears that oil prices will really take off towards the end of 2023 and into 2024. Now the International Energy Agency have warned that although neither Israel nor Palestine are major oil producers, the Middle East region accounts for a third of seaborne oil trade, and that ripple effects of the conflict could affect some of the region's major producers. Iran on its own for example accounts for 3.5 million barrels of oil a day, so if Iran's relations with Israel and the West deteriorate even further, then this could remove this supply from global circulation. Bloomberg Economics has predicted that a situation where Israel and Iran are in direct conflict, as well as unrest in the wider Middle East region, would send oil prices up $64 more per barrel to prices of around $150 per barrel and would consequently increase inflation by 1.2% and reduce GDP by 1%. Now, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, has issued a major warning saying that this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades and that the conflict may have far reaching impacts on energy and food markets, global trade, and geopolitical relationships. And this is all on the backdrop of demand for crude oil being set to rise to a record number in 2023. And this becomes really problematic when, according to Bloomberg reports, global oil inventories are on track to decline by 3 million barrels a day in the final three months of 2023, which takes numbers from the latest OPEC report. If realised, this would be the biggest shortfall of oil we have seen for three decades. And even today, with OPEC controls leading to supply being held back, the oil markets are already tightly balanced. Therefore, any supply shocks that do occur in the future, if one of these major oil producing nations gets pulled into the conflict, would have a significant impact on the balance between supply and demand in the oil market, and likely lead to a surge in oil prices. The US government has already been desperately releasing millions of barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve over the last couple of years in order to add to supply in circulation and artificially keep oil prices down. However, this reserve has been drained from around 650 million barrels in 2020 to now being at around 350 million barrels, with the majority of these reserves being released since the Russia and Ukraine conflict. The reserve levels are now getting dangerously low to levels not seen since the 1980s, which means that releasing barrels at the same rate as in recent times is just not a feasible strategy anymore. Oil prices really do underpin the entire US economy, with almost all goods and many services across various sectors being impacted by the price of oil in one way or another. This means that a continuous rise in oil prices for a sustained period of time will contribute to higher prices across the economy and will therefore push inflation even higher. We are also now seeing average wages across the US decline, which is a big red flag for the future of the US economy, especially with inflation still being well above the 2% government target. Only a few US states have a higher median household income than a year ago, compared to 17 states which saw declining household income, according to US Census Bureau data. 
This means that not only is inflation eating away at people's purchasing power, but on top of that, many people are also now earning less, which is a double blow to consumer spending abilities across the economy. This chart shows that real median household income has fallen by about $1,800 annually since the end of 2021 and is also down close to $4,000 annually from pre-pandemic levels at the end of 2019. And senior consultant at Morning Consult, Jesse Wheeler, did say that consumer sentiment still remains pretty low, close to where it was in lockdowns at the onset of the pandemic and more than half of the respondents to a recent CBS News poll say that they are struggling to pay their bills. This is just one of the various reasons why consumer spending power continues to get worse and worse and why dwindling consumer spending could cause a domino effect on the economy, leading to a severe recession. We've also got household debt at record highs, including credit card debt now at $1.031 trillion, passing the trillion dollar barrier for the first time in history. And with interest rates on credit card debt also at record highs, millions of Americans are currently saddled with crippling credit card debt, hampering their ability to continue spending. And even those without credit card debt are going to be put off taking on any credit card debt whatsoever due to the insanely high rates. And it's also going to weaken the demand for other items that are often bought on debt, like automobiles and stuff like that. We've also, of course, got student loan payments restarting again as of October, which is going to reduce consumer budgets even further, with the average student loan debt holder now having to pay over $300 in monthly repayments. So with spending power hit from so many different angles, many companies are going to really struggle in this economic environment and have far weaker earnings than in the past. Walmart's ex-CEO, Bill Simon, did warn that consumers are starting to buckle for the first time in a decade for all of the reasons that I've mentioned so far. He adds, that sort of pileup wears on the consumer and makes them wary. For the first time in a long time, there's a reason for the consumer to pause. To top it all off, total US debt is surging at a record-breaking pace and is now far higher than ever before at $33.4 trillion after a $275 billion increase in just one day. And federal debt held by the public is also well above $25 trillion now with the average weighted interest rate rising to almost 3% which means it's getting more expensive for the government to borrow money. As a result of this, quarterly interest payments on this federal debt has rocketed in recent years to being well above $800 billion. And for the fiscal year of 2023, which ended on September the 30th, the government has been spending around 11% of their total budget on interest rate payments. But of course, this percentage will almost certainly rise for the fiscal year of 2024 as a result of the recent surge in debt and average interest rate on this debt. The federal deficit for fiscal year 2023 came in at $1.7 trillion, so this problem is not going to get better anytime soon. The housing market specifically is in a whole load of trouble as well, with many key indicators looking even worse than before the 2008 global financial crisis, indicating a big correction is ahead. Click on screen right now to see my latest video where I go into this topic in more detail. Aside from that, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, that does help out a lot, and thanks a lot for watching.